In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this ordinary extension cord I got from a yard sale for just a couple of dollars and turned it into this extraordinary heavy-duty extension cord. It's a pretty easy job, but it does require a few parts. I'll put a parts list in the description so that you can see what you need. This is Rudy from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if it was helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, let's go ahead and get started by putting the end on real quick. Now there are some different styles of these ends. Uh, this particular end came from Lowe's, so it's a pretty easy one to work with, but they're all gonna be very similar. Okay, so if you notice here, this one has a silver screw this one has a brass screw on the other side, then, and then of course a green screw, which is your ground. Now the uh, brass colored screw that we have here is going to be your hot, that's going to go to your black wire. The silver screw is your neutral, and that goes to the white wire. So it's very simple. Um, you just peel your cord back. I'll show you how I did this here when I get to the, uh, the other end, but uh, very simple. I probably peeled back about an inch and a quarter here, maybe something like that. And if you notice here, it's kind of hard to see because it's the same color as the plastic, but there's a strip gauge right here. And what you do is, is you lay your wire across there and it kind of tells you how deep to strip that so that your wires are in there deep enough. Okay, very simple. Also, if, you're, if your end has a sleeve like this that needs to go on first, make sure to put that on first before you wire it up or it's going to be a whole lot of sadness. So I usually like to start with the uh, the green one first. Let's kind of get that poked down in there. There we go. Just tighten it up. Once one is tight, you can manipulate it around a little better. And we'll just tighten the other two up. All right, got all three of my wires tight. Now just put the sleeve back on. Now this particular one has a groove so that uh, they line up properly, so they just line that groove up and tighten the three screws. All right, so here's the clamp that goes on the back and holds the wire on. Now this does have a removable piece in the middle right here for a bigger wire. All right, so you don't want your cord to be in there too loose. And if you have too big of a wire in there and you leave that piece in there, you're going to crush the wire and that's no good for it either. And that's it. Just tighten the screws up. Okay, so before we get started here, just wanted to show you I've kind of gone ahead and started working on the ground. I've got a piece of ground wire looped around the ground screw in the box right there. All right, I've left a pigtail right here for me to attach the, uh, the cord to with a wire nut. And then I've got one side looped around the ground on this one plug right here. And then I've left this for the other plug, all right, to, uh, to loop around the other plug. Okay, so this device right here is going to add some longevity to the project. This is your strain relief. This helps the cord from bending too tightly. Now these come in some different sizes, so you have to make sure of what size you need, okay? What you do is you can, if you have a dial caliper, you can measure your cord. All right, this one is about 0.43 inches. So these come in a range of what sizes they fit, so make sure and get the one that fits your cord that you're working with. You take this nut off, and this will fit a half-inch knockout. I've knocked out the knockout already. All right. Now, when you take this side off, okay, there's like a rubber boot inside of here. And this, when this tightens down, it squeezes these fingers together and grips the cord real well, so that cord won't go anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started. Just put the, take the nut off and... Put it through the knockout. Just get it tight. You can even hit it with a screwdriver a couple times. It's pretty tight. All right. So go ahead and push your sleeve back on the cord. Otherwise, you're going to have to take it all back apart again. Now, what I'd like to do here is go ahead and kind of pre-peel the cord. Now, I think I'd peel it back probably about this far right here. Make sure I've got enough wire. You can always cut the wire later if it's too long. 
So take your cord and kind of fold it like this, right there, and then just take the knife and just lightly go over it, just like that, till you break through right here, see that? And just do that all the way around. Just like so. Keep turning it. It's a good way to do it. This way you don't cut into the wire. You don't want to do that. And of course my cuts don't line up, but you know, whatever. Close enough. All right, so just pull it off of there. Like that, and then I'll go ahead and cut these strings off of here, and I'll be right back. All right, so just go ahead and feed it through. And we don't need a whole lot of the jacket inside the box. All right, probably about an eighth inch to a quarter inch. Really, what I'm talking about right here where it comes through. Don't need a whole lot. All right, and just go ahead and tighten up our strain relief. It's pretty tight, and there you go. Not going anywhere. Okay, to make this a little bit easier, I've removed the ground screw from my plug to open the box back up. Let's just hook up the ground. I've cut the ground wire so that it matches the uh, solid wire in there. We're just going to wire nut these two together. That should be good. We'll just fold that and put it underneath the plug part because the GFI is going to be a bit thicker so we don't have a lot of room there. All right, so if you notice here, my plug, my regular plug, does fit right in the uh, space right here. But what I did was is I had to break these ears off, okay? The GFI plug, I left that alone. The ears are not broken off. And as you can see here, it does not fit into the thing. So very simple fix, just take pliers. Now you can break these off like this, right? A little bit on one corner here, but that's not gonna be enough. Might as well just go for broke because I already know we have to break off the whole thing, right? Like so, just break that off and now it should fit. We'll have to get these screws out of here first. All right, so I got the screws removed. I got the tabs broken off, and it does fit perfectly right in there. And what we'll do is, when we get to it, we're gonna take some number six bolts and bolt that puppy in there with a nut on the back, and that'll solve the problem of my plug is falling out. Now what I'm going to do is make the jumper wire to go from the GFI over to your regular plug. If you notice here, we've got a strip gauge right here, all right? You hold the wire up there and that tells you how far to strip that. The other plug has one that's on a different scale, so we'll, we'll strip it two different lengths on each end. Let me make these little wires and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now if you notice here on the back of the GFI plug, it says load here, it is on the top, and it says line on the bottom, right? The line is coming in from your extension cord and the load is going over to your other plug, all right? Now on this side, we've got brass screws and we've got silver screws, right? Silver there, brass there. The brass is the hot, just like I showed you before with the, uh, the end, you know, where we put the end on at the beginning. So we'll use our black wire for the hot. And what I did was, is I bent this with a, a pair of uh, Lyman's pliers and just bend it pretty sharply so that when it's in there, it's not sticking down very far because the, GP, uh, the GPS, the GFI plug doesn't have a lot of room. And what I did also is I put a little bend in the wire right here so that I have room to pull the plugs back and forth, you know, so that it fits the, uh, the cover because I don't have an exact distance on that, so this will give me the play that I need. So we're going to do that, and we're just going to tighten these up. All right, I got the other wire bent the way I want it and peeled. And we'll just put those in there like so. Very flush. We shouldn't have any problem with depth in the box. And just tighten up the screws. Now we don't have to do the ground like this because of the way that I did the other single ground wire and the you know attached to the box. 
Okay, so before we go any further, I just wanted to point something out about this plug right here. Notice this plug has like a metal band that goes around the back of it and it's riveted on there. This regular style plug right here, this cheap one, doesn't have any of that. The, uh, the metal goes through the center of the plug like so, and it's just a lot weaker of a design. Also, through right here, you can put a long screw through here and you don't have to worry about cutting the screw because this is open all the way through. The other plug doesn't have that. All right, so I got the end of my cord all peeled up. I used the uh, strip gauge to, uh, to gauge how deep I needed to peel that. And one other thing I wanted to mention is, is this must be an old cord. It's been sitting around for years. Uh, it has some corrosion on the hot wire. So I just took a uh, knife, razor blade, and then kind of scraped around it to shine that back up. Um, if that happens to you, that's all you need to do. Don't be tempted to tin the uh, wires with solder. It makes them too big and they won't go into the plug, okay? So I'm gonna hook the plug into my line side right here. Remember, silver goes to white and the uh, brass screw goes to the hot black wire. One thing I did wanna mention is, is you gotta twist these wires pretty good before you try to put them into the plug, otherwise they'll kind of fray apart as you're pushing them in there. So uh, keep that in mind. If it starts to fray apart, just pull it back out and give it another twist. It's a little bit tedious, but uh, especially the hot one, you don't want that any of those frayed wires touching the metal box. All right, the next thing I think I would do is hook the ground wire back up. Now you can, Hook this up after you bolt it on or before, I don't think it really matters, but that's just the order I'm gonna do it in. I'm gonna hook this up first to make sure I can get to these screws when the cover's on. All right, I got the ground hooked up. All we really have to do now is go ahead and bolt our cover on, but I did wanna mention one thing. I do realize that the box is metal and I could have ran the, the green wire from the extension cord to the ground screw in the box, and then just let this ground through the cover and through the box and all that. Okay, so we're all hooked up. Let's go ahead and get our cover on here. So I'm just gonna use these uh, number six by half inch bolts with uh, nuts. I'm also gonna use washers and lock washers on the back side so that uh, they don't come loose later. Remember I said earlier you could use this longer screw in the middle. Okay, so I've got the bolts in here. Looks real good. Got the nuts and the lock washers and all that stuff on the back. Now the only thing left when you're putting it back to, together is, is this ground wire. Just make sure that the ground wire isn't bending and touching any screws where it's not supposed to be. And you might have to bend it and kind of coax it into uh, to cooperating there. So just kind of push it down and as you're doing that, just peek inside and make sure that nothing is touching where it's not supposed to be touching. You could put tape around the plugs, but it's not necessary. That holds that plug solid and it's not gonna touch the sides. Just carefully push it into place, just like so. And then that's it, put the screws on. All right, cool. No rattles, no nothing like that. Let's plug it in and see if it works. All right, I've got my trusty GFI checker here. I don't know if you can see that, but these two are lit like it's supposed to be. GFI trips. There we go, it's working fine. All right, so that's how you do that. Thanks for watching.